The History of Los Angeles Have you ever wondered where the name California came from? It is from a 1510 novel by Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo called The Adventures of Esplendian. Early Spanish explorers thought California was an island and named it after a mythical island from the novel. In the book, the island of California is inhabited by proud female Amazon warriors. That's why the other name they considered was Kardashiania. Like most of America, there were already native populations that lived here before the Spanish sailed up the coast. The Tongva have made the area home for three to five thousand years, which is about how long it feels to sit through a Transformers movie. In 1781, L.A.'s first pobladores, or townspeople, supposedly marched from the mission at San Gabriel to get the Pueblo of L.A. started. Uh, that's quite a hike. I'm surprised some of them didn't get to Monterey Park and say, All right, that's enough for me. We are going to order some dumplings and watch HBO tonight. They arrived at the Pueblo of L.A. in June and started working their assigned plots of land. Yet, Felipe de Neve said they arrived September 4th, 1781, and he fixed that as the official founding date of the city. Basically, he made up the city's birthday, and Angelinos have been lying about their age ever since. I know someone who directs commercials. He was interviewing child actors for a job. One kid said, Don't worry about my age, sir. Six is the new four. The march from San Gabriel is often marked with processions that recreate the characters and the event. But, of course, a lot shorter. No one is going to walk from San Gabriel to downtown today. But here's the real problem. Historians now say the march from the mission at San Gabriel never actually happened. Like much of history, it seems like it was made up, probably to look good for the mucky mucks back in Spain to show that things were happening in the New World. Hey, come on, like you've never made up anything on your monthly projections. Now, why is L.A. situated where it is anyway? If you were going to build a city on the West Coast, wouldn't you situate it, say, on the coast? What if they had decided to make the center of New York City somewhere in the middle of New Jersey? It turns out the crafty Spaniards had a whole rule book on how to start a Pueblo. The Laws of the Indies published by King Philip II in 1573, gave would-be Pueblo-building subjects of the crown a set of guidelines to follow. One of the rules was to locate a new Pueblo 20 miles from the ocean as a deterrent to pirates. That seems a little overprotective, don't you think? I mean, what pirate is going to climb out of the ship and hike 20 miles just to pillage a city? The laws covered almost everything about building a Pueblo. They said that you needed a water supply, that you needed a source of labor, and in L.A., a good headshot photographer, especially if they can handle last-minute shoots. Some people wonder why L.A.'s downtown streets are all crooked when you look at them on a map compared to the rest of the city where the streets run north and south like most towns. This also came directly from the laws, which said Pueblo streets should be set at a 45-degree angle. You can see this in other Spanish settlements like San Jose, Monterey, and Williamsburg. The idea was that it promoted better wind flow, more shade, and easier walking, which seem like dubious claims. Why not just say it also helped your digestion and cleared out your sinuses? Why not? Later, the city wanted to sell real estate to newbies from the East Coast. Often, people from the East Coast bought plots of land sight unseen in the Western states. But you can't sell plots of land on crooked streets very well. So starting at Hoover on the west side and Indiana Street on the east side, Los Angeles started plotting out straight, boring plots that created nice, straight residential streets that would soon be clogged with Teslas and Priuses. Or is that Prii? The original settlement was near the river. After one flood too many, the townspeople said, That's it. Either we move, or we move this damn river. Not having any heavy-duty river-moving equipment, they decided to relocate to higher ground. 
They built a plaza with an open central area, a church, and the original arena for the Los Angeles Kings. Those were the days where they played in the yellow and purple jerseys. Today, the old plaza is a popular tourist attraction, formerly known as the Los Angeles Plaza Historic District. Other official Los Angeles Historic Districts include the old Plastic Surgery Square and the old Fake Personality Circle. Alvera Street is one of the most popular parts of the Plaza Historic District. It was originally called Wine Street, later renamed after Augustine Olvera, who once lived on the street. Olvera was the first judge in Los Angeles County. Had he known what was going to become of the street that bears his name, he would have made it illegal to sell cheap mini guitars and other trinkets to tourists.